Hey guys, so today I just got a couple interesting things that I've been reading about and actually really actually more curious about your thoughts on it than anything I'm going to say about it. But uh, interestingly, I've got one new news story and then one something from happened that happened a year ago with a smaller skincare brand. Um, but I'm going to start with the new stuff first. So having sunscreen like this uh, in Maui could get you fined up to $1,000. So if you're caught in possession of it, uh, any chemical sunscreen, stick, balm, lip balm, lotion, spray, whatever. If it's got chemical filters in it, in Maui, you can be fined up to $1,000. And they're actually following a few other places that have done something similar to that. I think Key West tried to do something like that, but it got voted down. But a few other places have done something like this. And this is basically what they're saying is because these chemical filters... Uh, cause the coral reefs to bleach and degrade and not be beautiful and to be affecting the ocean and the environment around it. So anywhere you go in Maui, if you're caught with a, any chemical sunscreen, organic sunscreen, you could be in big trouble. A thousand dollars, I would assume that's per product. I don't know. Can you imagine if I flew in there like today, not thinking about it, and I had my whole suitcase full of stuff? That'd be a big fine. I'd probably have to like retire or something to pay it off. <laughs> anyway, so it's interesting. I, I don't know. So I just did some searching on PubMed because I've been interested in this topic and just doing searches of the uh, articles that are on there. I don't really necessarily see anything totally conclusive that says this is a direct cause of this. I don't see any of that, but uh, there's tons of articles. So do some digging on it. PubMed uh, dot com. If you just search uh, coral reef sunscreen, you'll come up with some good articles. Some of them you have to pay for, so I wasn't going to do pay forty dollars for an article when there's some free ones on there. But anyway, it's an interesting discussion. I think certainly more research needs to be done. I just don't know how effective some of these mineral sunscreens are. If you're going to be in the water for hours, uh, how effective that's going to be at really preventing a lot of damage. So I do remember when I went to Hawaii. I didn't go to Maui. I went to Honolulu. The one with the Pearl Harbor, Honolulu. And I do remember going and being at the beach. And I wasn't a big sunscreen freak back then, but I certainly was wearing sunscreen. I just do remember this overall lingering scent of, it's just that telltale smell, that sunscreen smell. It's just very noticeable. So I definitely noticed it then. Um, and then you could even see kind of on the top of the water some of the shimmeriness of it, from probably from it rinsing off or people just spraying it right on, jumping right in before they wait for it to absorb. So... Anyway, it's interesting. Uh, there's some uh, company that makes mineral sunscreens and that was founded in Maui in 2015, and they've seen a 78% increase in sales just in the last year. So that's interesting. So I wish I would have been there at that time. I, you know what? Life is about time. Getting lucky, the right opportunity. They were in the right place at the right time, and now their sales have jumped almost 80% of mineral products. So it's interesting. I just don't necessarily know that mineral stuff is better, but I guess, what do I know about it? I'm not necessarily a scientist or a chemical environmentalist or any of that. So I'll link to it below, but a thousand dollars is pretty, that's a pretty high fine. I mean, even if you're caught like speeding or stealing or something around here, I don't I don't think you get a fine of that much. So anyway, I'm more interested in hearing what your guys' thoughts are on it because I'm sure you guys will be all over the board and maybe some of you that live in some of those areas where the reefs are uh, have thoughts on it or know more firsthand experience or knowledge or see how things have changed. So anyway, leave a comment. Very interested in that. Uh, the other little, it's not really news because it happened like a year ago, but anyway, I just thought I'd talk about it because it's kind of one of the things that freaks me out about skincare. So I was doing some research on this smaller brand that had been mentioned by a lot of you guys. Checking it out, try it, read about it. Uh, the brand's called Deviant Skincare. They're based, I believe, in UK. Um, so I was doing some Googling because I was checking out some of the products. The products are quite expensive. So I was kind of just searching, seeing if I could find promo codes, seeing if they do anything on Black Friday. And in that search, I found a uh, little article on Reddit uh, posted by somebody about uh, one of their cosmetic chemists nearly getting uh, in big trouble uh, with the FDA. So this cosmetic chemist apparently uh, was approached by Deviant Skincare about a year ago, or, you know, about a year, six months ago, to help them develop a new product. I believe it was one for hyperpigmentation. I'm brightening skin. So it sounds like they approached this cosmetic chemist. They didn't have a lot of didn't have a lot of uh, contract details, anything like that. 
sounded like they agreed on a fee and a rate, their address, what they're going to do, but it, there was no like contracts really or anything else. It sounds like, which is frightening. Uh, so they were uh, contracting with this gal to help formulate their new product. So in this research, you, Deviant Skincare is based in the UK. This cosmetic chemist was based in the US. And so to get started on it, they sent some salicylic acid products to her so she could start working on it. Well, salicylic acid is regulated. So uh, soon that cosmetic chemist, so she says, uh, gets an email from the FDA. What are you doing with this? Why are you doing this? Who is sending this to you? What's going on? You know, you're in possession of this, which is technically like a regulated chemical drug. You can be in big trouble for this. And conveniently, after that happened, um, she emailed Deviant Skincare, and they conveniently, sounds like, to her claims, ignored them, ignored her. Just like pretending like she didn't exist, suddenly her corporate email that she had established with them was gone. Um, and eventually the FDA was saying, you know what, if, you, if we don't answer back, we're going to fine you. And eventually she ended up having to threaten this deviant skincare line uh, into discussing the FDA with them. Uh, she's working for us. She can't be in trouble herself because we contracted her. Uh, and eventually they did that. But... What the heck? I mean, that's like, I, that is the thing with like some of these smaller brands. It's like, you wonder how some of these come, especially if it's an expensive brand for them not to really have any contract or uh, really discussions with this person on anything. Like they just contract with this uh, cosmetic chemist that had just lost her job somehow in the pandemic or whatever. What the heck? <laughs> so I didn't purchase anything from them. Um, I don't necessarily... This is all what she's saying, and she has some screenshots and things like that. I'll link to all that below, but anyway, it always makes you wonder how some of these products are just by fly-by-night things, or especially when they're brands that charge a good price for their stuff. To see them being so, uh, should I say, like, willy-nilly or, like, almost almost like negligent with any contracts, it's kind of freaky. So, kind of wonder, got to wonder how some of these other brands just start popping stuff up, and who do they talk to, and who are they mailing drugs to, and... It's for, and then and then at the end of it, they didn't even want to pay her for any of her work that she had done up to that point. So she had to threaten them legally, and eventually, it sounds like things got resolved that way. But it's never good when you have to threaten somebody legally to pay you what they said they were going to pay you. And uh, anyway, so it doesn't sound like she ever formulated a product for them, but who knows? I mean, I don't know. It's a little crazy. So anyway, I'll link to all this stuff below, but I'm more interested in hearing what your thoughts are on all of it. So maybe my perspective, I need some enlightening on both these topics. So I certainly could learn from all of you. So anyway, uh, leave a comment. Love hearing from you guys and stay tuned for more tomorrow. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or a thumbs down if you didn't or whatever. Or if you didn't like it, just don't give me a thumbs down. <laughs> whatever. Okay. That's why I never say anything about it because I just, I goof it all up. Okay. Anyway, thanks so much. Bye guys.